Yeah, I should have. I, I wanted one more tonight. Really, would have been ideal because it just moving a nice amount. But um, you know, those two scrapped really well at the end. I thought, but it was yeah, just doing enough off the pitch, dry, dry surface. But just feels like if you can bash away, bash away, it might feel like not not lots happening, and then just one moves. Just take your breath. I'm going to ask Ricky a question. You can just chill because I know <laughs> you have a drink. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to go to Ricky. How did Australia do there? I mean, that was a lot of pressure on the batsman there. What would that atmosphere have been like in the dressing room? Started quite serenely. Well, right through the course of this game, it's gone back and forward to either side, hasn't it? I mean, England were very dominant early in, in day one. Australia found a way to get themselves back into the game. You know, Kawaja was outstanding. And, and then at the start of this fourth innings, None for 50, everything's seemingly going well, the wicket's flat, the ball's not moving, a Warner looking good and scoring quite freely, and then enters Stuart Broad, a couple of big wickets, and in a spell that his team needed, and I said on air then, his team needed that spell, the series needed that spell, because it looked like this game was slipping away, but that's been the great thing about Ashes cricket through the years. You can't predict anything, it takes one spell, one good innings from a batsman, and a whole game and a whole series can change, and... England did a great job to fight back so strongly tonight. Did you feel like you needed to do something special? Are you OK now? You, you can have a chat now. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't feel like... It, it didn't go into the spell feeling like we needed, like desperately needed wickets. I think we've all known with the new ball, it's almost almost the best time to bat because you can actually hit it. And as soon as the ball goes a bit softer, it becomes much harder to score, uh, particularly off the spin, actually. You can't hit the sort of big, big shot straight. So... Uh, coming into that, I just thought if I can just whack the pitch as hard as I possibly can, um, try and get a little bit of movement and create a bit of theatre. I think that's one thing, particularly in Ashes cricket and Edgebaston, and if you can get the crowd going, create a bit of theatre, you can almost feel like something's happening even when it's not. And to be honest, I thought, you know, Stokes, you mentioned it to us as a group when we were out there, was our first hour quite good enough? You know, the bowlers charged in and hit the pitch, but as a group, were we really up and at the Aussies? Probably not as much as we could have been. So we had to get everything moving in our direction. and. You know, any day that you've got Smith and Marnus back in the back in the hut and, and Warner, to be honest, you know we're we're delighted. Um, but you know, there's still still two results on the table, I think. You've got Smith ten times now. Ten. I think so, yeah. So let's show the wickets. Yeah, well, all ten. And I think the fact that that Steve Smith saw that first one swing in the way that it did, I think it actually changed the way that he played the second one. If you look at the way that he played the second one, he already, he had his foot in the right position, and because the ball was coming in. Dragged his foot slightly back inside the line, which brought the outside edge quality bowling. How did you feel you bat today as a team? How we batted? Um, we, we were pretty happy. I mean, I think uh, the intent from ball one was pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, I sit next to Rooty in the change room, actually, and he just went, I fancy a reverse scoop for six first balls. Like, look, did if you try and talk him out of it? No, so if it's in your gut, you've got to go for it, mate. That's, <laughs> what, that's what we're about. Um, and he goes, oh, I'll decide when I'm walking out. So obviously he didn't change his mind, did he? Um, but I think that sort of intent just made us all smile in the change room. It's such a powerful thing for our changing room to know that you know, well, obviously one of our best batters is playing that sort of fearless style. And, uh, you know, what, what Baz says to us, he'd sort of prefer, prefer us to get caught long on than out defending. And um, for, our, for our leading batter to go and set that intent, actually as powerful it, it not hitting it almost, you know, um, to actually showing that intent to do it. And then third over the day, you've got a third man back out of slip and, and you're sort of on the front foot straight away.